Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone uh, we will continue with our last lecture today and uh, before end of this course I thought uh, an appropriate topic is uh, some review of Kalman filter theory because without that pro probably in my view no control theory is, uh, is complete. So, obviously I will not be able to do a justice with all the derivations and everything about Kalman filter theory, but I will be able to give you some sort of a summary or a little bit the theory around that uh, so that you can actually take this and implement in your problems actually. So, let us uh, do that, but before uh, before doing that uh, le let us go through a little bit on what we discussed last time okay? and that was about this uh, LQ observer that we discussed uh, uh, last time actually. So, a very quick review of that. So, this is uh, this is what we did there observers and all we are need because this, I mean the need for the observer or estimator is because we typically propose state feedback control design and uh, state information is needed for control computation and most of the time we may not have uh, sensor rich systems. In other words uh, either the sensor is not available expensive sensor all that actually whatever we discussed last, uh, last class. So, what we do, do here in an observer of for linear system design, we have a system plant like that. We propose that a observer dynamics be constructed like this where k is an estimator gain. And then we discussed about the error, error being x minus x hat, uh, hat is the estimated information, x is the true information. Then what happens is uh, like you go through this error dynamics and things like that and try to make sure that it is not a function of the error dynamics uh, is I mean the x tilde dot is not a function of state and, and control. So, we enforce these coefficients to be 0 and then we derive this estimator dynamics observer dynamics to be of this form. So, it exactly falls into this this form that A x plus B u, but uh, we have an additional term k e that is uh, estimator gain times y e that uh, that actual output minus estimated output C x right actually. So, that is the innovation term. So, uh, you have that uh, filter dynamics as like an linear system dynamics plus a Kalman gain times innovation term actually. Then we went ahead and saw a comparison between control design and observer design where you told okay, the closed loop dynamics of the for the control system design is like that and closed loop error dynamics for the observer systems I mean turns out to be very close to that actually. Then we discussed oh, the objective here is like x should go to 0 and that is uh, keeping that objective we have designed an LQR controller and the objective here is also x tilde should go to 0. So, fairly similar objectives. Only problem was k e happens to be in the left hand side here whereas uh, it happens to be right hand side here. So, we took uh, transpose of this matrix and the, by doing the transpose uh, k e transpose turns out to be the right and then we told okay, can we can actually treat this A transpose and C transpose as equivalent A and B and then design a K e transpose instead. instead. Instead of directly designing K e, we will be able to design K e transpose, but the once we design that then taking transpose means uh, we are done with uh, the design actually. So, for that we have this system dynamic original system and had a dual system and observe that uh, controllability for one is observability for the other and vice versa. So, if you see this closed loop system dynamics and all, so, so we propose that this KE transpose is uh, should be designed as similar to what we design as Kalman, Kalman gain actually, I mean for this for the control design part of it LQ again. So, instead of R inverse B transpose P, we should have R inverse C times P okay? and this P should be a, like a solution of uh, this matrix and things like that actually. So, anyway we uh, continued with that and then uh, the observer dynamics turns out to be uh, like this with the with a way to design and observe again actually. So, this is this all turns out to be like a like the LQ observer design and then we will see I mean we have also told that towards end of the last lecture is like if you consider the system dynamics with the noise process noise and sensor noise uh, then it then it also turns out that. Uh, the filter dynamics and all remain similar and then that is the little bit more detail we will we'll see this in this class and continue further actually. 
So, this uh, this is about uh, this lecture is about Kalman filter theory. So, we will revisit that uh, that uh, uh, towards the end of the lecture what we discussed last time and then continue further actually. So, outline of this particular lecture will be something like this. We have uh, continuous time Kalman filter that we touched upon in last class. Then we will extend that to discrete time Kalman filter. So, the system dynamics is given in discrete form now uh, and the uh, measurement is also given in discrete time. Okay. Then we will try to combine the two and tell okay, the, how about a continuous discrete uh, Kalman filter. In other words, the system dynamics is continuous, but, uh, but measurement comes at discrete time. So, that is what uh, reality is actually most of the time. And this will give us a platform for, to talk about something called extended Kalman filter, which is used heavily in, in practice. And most of the time when people tell I have uh, kind of use a Kalman filter, that is what they mean. They mean uh, they, have they have actually implemented an EKF uh, in the into their design basically. So, to up to that we will discuss in this lecture and then probably that will be a good summary before we wind up this course. All right, so continuous time Kalman filter design for linear time invariant system that is the that is the basic starting point and that is what we discussed last class also. So, we, we have a system dynamics which is like x dot is a x plus b u plus g w okay. and then uh, measurement equation turns out to be y equal to c x plus v where w and v are uh, like w is process noise vector and v is sensor noise vector. Okay. And remember these these are uh, affecting the system anyway because uh, the w is nothing but an input uh, which is directly affecting the system states. Okay. And if you really want to estimate a state into the feedback uh, control design that means u becomes an estimated for uh, I mean function of an estimated state then for the estimation process you will use y and y is corrupted by sensor noise anyway. So, these two will uh, will affect the system dynamics uh, the effect uh, I mean it they will affect the performance of the controller like that actually. So, before we proceed further here are some of the some of the assumptions involved and uh, what it means is x initial condition of x is given like this okay, w is given like this pair q 0 q and v is like 0 r. What it means in this parenthesis is so the first thing is mean the second thing is variance actually or if it is a vector it is called covariance matrix. So, that means uh, x of 0 initial condition mean mean value is x tilde 0 okay, and the covariance matrix is p naught. Similarly, W t which is, a, which is a process noise has 0 mean and Q as the covariance matrix for this. Okay. What is the covariance matrix by the way? This is all given here. Expected value of W times W transpose is actually Q if uh, tau is equal to t, I mean sorry tau is 0. If tau is not 0, then uh, it will happen to be 0 actually because the delta function is defined like that anyway. So, this is uh, so Q means that expected value of W times W transpose at the same time basically okay. so, uh, that is what it means. Anyway, so we also assume that this W and V are uncorrelated white noise that is uh, that is the fundamental backbone of Kalman filter theory that this noise thing that uh, that are uh, accounted for are assumed to be white they may or may not be white, but in the entire theory uh, development they are assumed to be white. And what do you mean by white is like uh, they are supposed to be like uncorrelated. That means if I take, uh, I mean the correlation process and all are, are defined like this. If I take any um, other time like t and t plus tau, where tau is a non-zero quantity, then I should get zero actually. Okay, so there is uh, nothing. If I multiply the same process noise with the same point of time, then I'll get q. But if any other time if I multiply, then I'll get zero actually. So these are like uh, uh, what is what are called as white noise basically and they also they are assumed to be 0 mean actually w and v are assumed to be 0 mean. Okay. All right, so, objective here what is the problem statement? The, the objective here is to estimate the state vector x at t using the state dynamics as well as a sequence of measurement actually. So, we are not talking about only a single measurement we have to have a, a sequence of measurement uh, and using all those sequence of measurement, if observability is there, that means, I, uh, I mean if I keep on taking sequence of measurement uh, and uh, as a combination actually, those sequence of measurements will have will be affected by system state actually, okay, that is the meaning of observability. So, assuming that observability is there for the system output and system dynamics pair that you are talking about, then what we what we really talk is we take sequence of measurements, they are uh, corrupted by noise all right, but still we will be able to 
get, uh, get a good estimate x set of t. And what do you mean by good estimate? Uh, it again means that if I take uh, x tilde that is uh, error between true and estimated value that will become very small in uh, I mean ideally x tilde should go to 0 as t is just infinity, but in a, in a stochastic sense where this noise vector is there and all they, this will not happen in this manner even though we would like to happen actually. So, what will what will happen then the, the expected value of x tilde will go to 0. Okay. If I if I take expected value means it is a large uh, some a large uh, I mean is a average of a large number of uh, cases actually. So, if I keep on uh, I mean uh, taking this x tilde t for a large number of uh, discrete point of time probably then if I take the mean, mean value of that then that should go to 0 at least. Okay. So, the expected value sense it should go to 0 okay. that is all we are, we are demanding actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, let me probably write it here. What we are telling here is expected value of x tilde t okay, should go to 0 that is that is our objective actually totally speaking. Okay. All right, so, let us uh, let us see that uh, how does it happen we will uh, we will get motivated by this LQ observer that we discussed uh, last class and all and take okay, we will assume the same observer dynamics rather it is uh, it is not similar it is same actually. Okay. So, we will just take uh, A x hat plus B u plus uh, gain times estimator gain times y minus y hat, where y hat is the estimated output and estimated output will turn out to be C x hat again actually. Okay. So, this uh, derivation is uh, fairly straightforward because C y uh, I mean x hat by definition is expected value of x. Okay. When, what you mean by x hat here okay, is not uh, I mean this x hat is nothing but uh, expected value of uh, okay all right let me all right okay this uh, x this x set is nothing but expected value of x actually okay so in that sense so uh, uh, the y if you, if you continue with uh, y hat and y hat is expected value of y and y is nothing but c x plus v and uh, a great property of uh, uh, that expectation operation is it is a linear operator. So, you will be able to split it out and take c, c out of this uh, uh, operation. So, it turns out to be expected value of v is anyway 0 because it is a 0 mean uh, white noise. So, this is because of that the expected value of v turns out to be 0 and expected value of x is x hat by definition. So, y hat turns out to be C x hat and that is how it will operate actually. Now, the problem is how do you how do you um, come up with uh, this uh, design of K e. Um, so, th this is what uh, what is required anyway without that we will not be able to propagate the system dynamics actually. So, we will not go through the entire derivation I mean it, uh, it will require probably a full class and all that. So, what we what we uh, what I will tell is uh, just a summary part of it. And summary part is uh, like uh, the gain what you are talking about here Kalman gain can be computed like this P C transpose R inverse okay. and then P C transpose R inverse uh, this uh, what is that uh, after we compute this then x at uh, dot is nothing but A x at plus B u plus k e times y minus C x at actually. So, how do you compute this uh, P? The p is given uh, like you can solve this uh, Ricard equation, it is called filter Ricard equation actually. And if you see this Ricard equation, I mean uh, if before what we discussed, uh, the only difference is probably this term actually. Okay. So, this term, uh, I mean the LQ observer sense, this, this term earlier it did not have a g, a g in the left and g transpose in the right, okay. only it was only q. So, if you assume that G is actually like a identity matrix here or G w is the noise not not w per se then it is nothing but an LQ observer actually. In other words LQ observer is also like a Kalman filter where we are assuming that uh, that G is uh, actually identity matrix may not happen of course. I mean the w may not uh, w is like a control input control input may not alter the x dot uh, directly by the way it passes through a influence matrix anyway G it is like a V matrix. Okay. So, if you assume that G is actually identity then it is nothing but uh, what a LQ observer actually. Okay. 
anyway so this is uh, this is how it operates so if you really want to mechanize a kalman filter like this all that you have to do is initialize x at 0 with a guess okay then you have to solve this Riccardi matrix uh, P for the filter algebraic Riccardi equation. Again, this is in the in the framework of infinite time. That means it 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 may take a little longer time to stabilize actually. So if your TF is infinity, then uh, this is zero. Otherwise, it will not be actually zero. Anyway, assuming that it is this, this algebraic equation Riccardi equation is to be solved, which is called filter Riccardi equation. And then this uh, after you solve for P, you compute the Kalman gain as uh, something like this. And once you are there, then you can propagate the system dynamics because you already have an initial condition there. And it, uh, it will also lead to this uh, good stability behavior and things like that. That means uh, the error that we are talking about x tilde, which is expected value of uh, x tilde and all that what we discussed here, it is all guaranteed to happen actually because it is a linear time invariant system. Okay. And there are also uh, nice properties associated with that in the, in the sense. Uh, of uh, this is of something called uh, separation principle and all. So that means you can design a controller end of the estimator separately actually. So it, it will not hurt the stability behavior of uh, each of the thing even though you want to operate it uh, based on a feedback system. I mean if you if you if you want to operate you based on a feedback of estimator state then although nothing nothing is going to happen drastically wrong basically. Because the the closed loop eigenvalues will be pay, will be eigenvalues of this system, I mean, and the eigenvalues of uh, the aerodynamics and all that. So those theorems are there. I'll not uh, discuss too much on that actually. So this is the summary of how do you mechanize a, a continuous time Kalman filter. But that's not the problem here. Is it, it this uh, this entire formulation assumes uh, a continuous uh, availability of measurement? As y is x plus v that means continuously the, the measurement is, is coming to us actually and certainly that is not reality. Okay. Measurements are taken only at discrete point of time actually. So, if, if that is the case then it also makes sense to, to, to probably discretize the system equation, system dynamic equation and then we have several methods anyway you can use uh, zero order hold Euler integration all sort of things I mean whatever discretization method. So, once you discretize the system dynamics and the measurement is anyway coming in, in discrete manner then probably we will have a compatible system to talk about actually. So, that is what uh, uh, this discrete time Kalman filter theory talks about. Okay. So, let us uh, uh, let us talk about that. Okay, so, what you are assuming here is a, is a discrete time system model again linear time linear system and when you talk about uh, discrete time system normally there is no difference whether you take uh, like a time varying system or time invariant system. So, we will just take time varying system actually. So, x k plus 1 is uh, a k x k plus b k u k plus z k times w k y k c k x k plus b k. So, remember a k b k c k z k all that they are uh, they need not necessarily be constant they can be also be time varying actually. Okay. Again we assume that w k and v k are 0 mean uncorrelated Gaussian white noises and this is a, these are like a little bit strong assumption but then these are standard assumptions for Kalman filter theory. So, this uh, the, they are corrupted by noise all right but the noise satisfies this property. The, the both of the noise have zero mean. They are uncorrelated, and they are Gaussian processes also. Okay. Gaussian makes it probably the assumption of Gaussian is more. I mean, done to pro both address the realistic situation that most of the time the noise happens to be Gaussian. And once you assume Gaussian noise, there there are lot of nice properties actually yeah, for which the theory becomes complete. For example, if you if you have a Gaussian distribution, then uh, mean and variance. Uh, gives us uh, the entire meaning. I mean more than that uh, there is nothing actually. So, if you once you know uh, the, the noise is actually Gaussian and once you know the mean and its variance then we are probably done actually. Okay. Theory becomes complete basically. But for the entire derivation remember I mean in my view all that is required is that uh, it has a 0 mean and non-correlated things. So, 0 mean uh, white noise that is all we, we need actually for the derivation part. So, let us proceed with that uh, then because of these assumptions these are hold, these hold good and what it means is if I take uh, expected value of w times w transpose if they are not taken at the same instant of time that is 0 okay, nothing happens there. If they are taken at the same instant of time then this this q k matrix pops up and this q k is called process noise covariance matrix actually. 
Similarly, if you take uh, sensor noise covariance matrix, that is the relationship it needs to satisfy. So, if they are not taken at the same time, that is 0, if they are taken at the same time, then this is this is RK matrix. Okay. And if you take even at the same time, whatever time, same or different time between V and W, then it is 0. So, they are totally uncorrelated to each other actually. Okay. So, it is a, either autocorrelated, autocorrelation sense or self-correlation sense uh, that, that happens that way. But if you take cross correlation sense, VK and WK is like two different things taken together on that, no matter whatever time you are talking about, they are all 0 actually. So, these are the like if you think they are slightly strong assumptions rather. But there are also tricks and techniques to if it is not really a white noise, how do you, how do you make use of it? There are ideas like shaping filter design like uh, you constitute some sort of a small system, subsystem rather, where, uh, where you take uh, white noise as input and the output of that artificial subsystem should be really the, the color noise that you are talking about actually. Then you can augment the original system dynamics with that artificial system which is like shaping filter design and all. Then, uh, then you can talk about estimating the, the entire state vector actually. Okay. So, those the, if somebody is interested they are encouraged to study details of those. Uh, anyway, filtering theory is a, is a fascinating subject, it is a complete theory by itself and all that actually. So, there are many tricks and techniques available on the way basically. Anyway, so coming back, uh, this is what uh, what is assumed. Now, what is our, uh, uh, I mean, what's the way to proceed further? So we we need some sort of a filter dynamics anyway, okay? And the filter dynamics is an artificial system dynamics which it simply needs to be propagated with some initial condition and, and uh, some gain computation actually. So there are two ways of doing this here in the discrete time setup. One is like uh, I'll assume it's a it's a predictor corrector form which is actually very popular. Okay. There are several reasons for that of course. And then there is the observer form, what you have, what you have seen in the uh, this uh, continuous time framework. So, observer form or recursive form can be derived from this, suppose uh, I mean this uh, from the predictor corrector form easily actually rather. Anyway, what do you do here? First of all, you predict okay, for the next time step, yes, uh, okay, let us talk about this. Let us assume that I know some state information already at kth instant of time and I also know the controller at kth instant of time. So, I will be able to I will be able to take advantage of this system dynamics without the noise of course okay. and then I will be able to predict what is going on actually. Okay. That means, if the noise does not happen to be there, then I should have a better prediction here whatever I will predict anyway. But uh, remember this prediction part does not assume any, any sensor information actually. And once the sensor information is there, that means sensor has given me some value, I will be able to update this value from from that k plus 1 instant of time. And uh, same thing happens at kth instant of time also. If I start with k minus 1, then uh, I this I will get k actually here and then k will be updated here. Okay. So, first prediction, then update, prediction, update like that it will happen actually. Okay. Now, if you um, the reason it is written like here, not k plus 1, but k is, is easy to see that if I put substitute this uh, this expression here, then I will be able to derive this actually. So, this is uh, this is observer form or, or recursive form actually. Okay. So, prediction correction form is more popular since it is more logical, uh, structured way and easy to implement also actually. We will see that actually. It also leads to a logical extension or ext log logical extension in external kalman filter theory which is the uh, which is primary requirement anyway before we proceed a bunch of definitions remember we are talking about uh, plus minus plus minus all sort of things here so we will be able to okay uh, do some of these actually anyway so before we proceed further this uh, thing this exp uh, let me explain a little bit here and this uh, Okay. So, so, what you are telling here is something like uh, we have this time sequence k okay, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 like that. I will have this picture one more time later anyway. So, I start with some information here and then I will be able to predict uh, uh, using the system dynamic that I know uh, from step 1 to step 2. Okay, This is that time axis actually. Okay. Then uh, when, I, when I have this measurement information coming then I will update this here. Then I will again predict it here from 2 to 3, I will get some value, then I will be able to update using a, using some sort of sensor information. Then I will continue that. So, this is the, the 
the prediction part and then there is a correction part actually involved ok. So, this is uh, this is the correction sorry this is this is this way ok. So, predict correct predict correct like that it will happen actually. So, this this the meaning of that alright. So, let us continue this ok. So, before before proceeding further let us talk about certain certain error values and all that. So, remember I have um, so, so, the prediction part is uh, is written normally like minus and the correction part is written as plus actually. So, when, when you see minus that means it is actually coming from the prediction when you see plus it is actually corrected person taking the output information actually ok. So, prediction part and then correction part like that. So, uh, we assume I mean we will define this uh, this error quantities this error covariance matrices and things like that before proceeding further. So, this x tilde minus x tilde k minus is nothing but x k minus x k hat minus similarly x, x tilde k plus is x k minus x hat k plus and similarly k plus 1 and things like that. Now, error covariance matrix that uh, we also need to define I mean we need to define it this way p k minus that is the error covariance matrix at time step k in the prediction part of it is given like this expected value of x tilde k minus times x tilde k minus transpose like that. They are all out of product anyway because it so each of that is n by 1 vector. So, if I get an out of product it becomes like an n by n matrix basically. So, this error this error values uh, error states are defined like that and error covariance matrices are defined like that. These are simply definitions to begin with. And obviously, the objective here is to derive expressions for these actually. We, we ultimately need to derive expressions for common gain uh, k e k, but also we need to uh, derive this expressions p k my p k plus 1 minus and p k plus because k e k is a function of these. So, we need to derive expressions for that actually and you cannot really start with the definitions because these expected value means we, have, we should have uh, I mean infinite number of uh, these uh, these of I mean values and available to us and then we have to take uh, average value of that and also from definition it will not be uh, I mean it is not advisable it is not possible also. We need a kind of uh, precise information like uh, separate expressions to derive this actually. So, let us do let us see whether we can do that. Now, expressions for p k plus 1 minus ok. So, remember p k plus 1 minus is, is given like this. So, ok. So, we need to derive an expression for that one first and then take the expected value of this outer product and all that. So, what is this? This is by definition is this 2 ok. And then uh, this the, this x k plus 1 is like this ok. Then this uh, this part is given like that from the definition. This is coming from this actually ok. So, this, this part came from that and then this part is, is nothing but the system dynamics ok. Remember estimated one uh, is uh, the no noise, but the true one is given with noise anyway ok. So, now you see that these two are, are cancelled out uh, this uh, this v k u k will go from v k u k and you are left out with uh, only the rest of the terms and that is given something like this ok. So, x uh, if I see x tilde k plus 1 minus it turns out to be like that. So, now I can take uh, p k plus 1 minus which is expected value of this uh, the, this times the transpose and uh, this one I have just derived this is like this. So, I will take a transpose of that also then I will uh, I will expand this transpose and then multiply to the, the algebra and all that actually. And remember these are all uh, like cross correlation is 0. So, expected value of uh, this w k and uh, x, x tilde k this is 0 and this is also 0. Yes, and in anywhere we see a cross correlation term uh, these are all 0 uh, by assumption in Kalman filter theory. So, we take it to take out those and we, we are left out with this and these values remember whatever we have here this is nothing but definition if you go back to definition this turns out to be like that ok. So, this is nothing but p k plus actually. Right. So, this this one what you see here is nothing but p k plus. So, what you what you have here a k times p k plus times a k transpose. So, it just comes from there. Many of these are simply in, uh, simply like uh, good bookkeeping basically. If you know what you are doing substitute expand and then cancel out put some I mean see which all terms are 0 and deal with rest of the terms that are left out actually. Similarly, if you see this one ok expected value of w k times w k transpose uh, that happens to be q k by definition 
and then it turns out to be like that actually. Okay. So, if you really want p k plus 1 minus then it is a function of p k plus and things like that actually. Okay. So, this happens to be because this uh, okay, w k and x k these are all like uh, what is called as orthogonal, orthogonal means uh, this expected value of that happens to be 0. All right. So, th this this process will start uh, start from p, p 0 minus and p 0 minus uh, is like uh, initial covariance matrix of this uh, error vector and all that and that is supposed to be uh, selected by the designer basically. Okay. That is how you start with along with your x 0 information like a guess for the initial condition for the estimated state you also start with a guess for your covariance matrix actually. All right, so, this expression is derived like that. What about the other one that p k plus because remember p k plus is, re is required here. So, we need that. So, p k plus uh, is a by definition is expected value of x k I mean x tilde k plus times x tilde k plus transpose. So, we need to have x tilde k plus first. Okay. So, this one is given like this by definition and x tilde k plus is given by this. This is the, the predictor corrector form. So, this, this expression comes there. Okay, so, if you put this this expression there, okay, this this part here, and then try to simplify this, it turns out that okay, I can probably simplify that way actually. Okay. So I I'll combine this x k term is here, this x k term is here. So this is i minus uh, k e k times e k, okay, times x k, and similarly I have this x k hat minus here and x k hat minus here. So I'll put it there actually that way. So, I will try to simplify this and I got some sort of a formula like that. So, p k plus is expected value of the same this expression times that. So, I will put this one times that ex, that transpose and then again do the same thing. I will expand this uh, this bracketed term and then multiply and see what all simplification I can do. So, it turns out that again this expected value of this these are constant uh, they are like uh, uh, expected value is not a function of that. So, I will be able to take out and they, these are orthogonal to each other. So, they will go. So, what are left out? These two expressions see this uh, what I told here is these two expressions will, will not be required. So, first and last will be there actually and first and last by definition will uh, will turn out with this part which by definition is p k minus and this part by definition is r k anyway. So, p k plus happens to be like this. Okay. So, now we need to derive a, a k e k um, like the estimator problem. So, remember what is our, our problem actually, I mean the problem here is the p k plus which by definition we will go back to p k plus is error times the error basically the transpose of course and this is after update that means this, this, this if you see x k tilde plus this is after this x at k plus that means after I correct this using this innovation terms and all that whatever I get is that and then error term happens to be true minus that. Okay, so, obviously, if I take a, a kind of a covariance matrix for that, I want that to be minimum actually as minimum as possible ideally 0. So, what I formulate a problem is okay, let me go back and try to see whether I can minimize this this operator I mean this p k plus and minimizing this p k plus means I one of that is like a trace operator remember this is a p k plus is a matrix. So, trace is nothing but a kind of a norm operator okay. and the trace is like uh, if you I mean if you see that a little bit that each individual terms will happen to be in diagonal and trace is nothing but summation of diagonals actually. So, if I just take this expression p k plus uh, happens to be like this this one okay. and this if, it, if I take second norm square of this this uh, x tilde plus x tilde k plus second norm square and that is nothing but uh, trace of p k plus actually. Okay. So, the I want to minimize uh, this expression half of trace of uh, p k plus. So, whatever happens uh, whatever the solution I will get is k e k basically. So, what do I how do I do that uh, if I really want to minimize this j uh, the necessary condition is j see remember this j happens to be a function of k e k where p k plus uh, there is a k e k expression and all. Okay. So, I consider this as a function of k e k and then try to minimize that actually. So, how do I I mean do that the necessary condition turns out to be like that and j is is this where p k plus is this expression anyway. So, I substitute that and then uh, try to uh, I mean take this algebra do this algebra it turns out to be like this and k e k happens to be left hand side of both. So, I will be able to take common out of that and then I will solve for k e k is like this. Okay. So, if I take right multiply with this inverse this this side you will get k e k this side will happen like that. 
So, K e k which is Kalman gain in discrete time formulation turns out to be like this actually. There is also an idea that okay, P, P k uh, this is what we derived here one it seems slightly complicated one does not have to live with that you can actually simplify this expression you can expand this thing and then cancel out a few terms and it turns out to be as simple as that. But later we will see that uh, this form is advisable because of numerical condition is conditioning issues and all that. Uh, this is like a quadratic form what you see here. So, the symmetricity of E k will not be compromised even for even because of numerical inaccuracies in computation and all that. So, even though it is a slightly little more uh, kind of computation we still I mean it is still advisable to use the bigger expression anyway. Okay. So, what is the summary? Summary is uh, problem is like this I have a, I have a discrete time formulation. Uh, where x k plus 1 is like this, y k is like that, where w and v k, w k and v k are uh, uncorrelated, uh, white noise, zero mean, orthogonal to state vector all that is there. And then we, we, st we start this process by initializing these two, we initialize the estimated value of the state as well as an, a guess value for the error covariance matrix. Then the gain computation can be done this way, where p k minus can be computed, uh, I mean using this this propagation equation and all that actually okay. okay this is this is what you see here is nothing but propagation equation basically what you see here okay. that means if i know pk minus i'll i'll be able to compute pk plus provided i know ke k basically this so this is like uh, i mean if i have an initial condition i'll be able to propagate this uh, uh, this covariance matrix anyway so this is uh, what is going on here so, we have a initialization which is uh, done, then again gain can be computed like this, where and the update equations will proceed the, that way. So, this is uh, after I get a measurement, I will update the state vector that way. Okay. So, it is my propagated thing, with the prediction part of it plus the correction term which is like coming from the measurement multiplied with a Kalman gain term. Actually. And then the, the error covariance matrix can be propagated this way or that way, but this is preferable anyway. So, we propagate that way and get ready for the next time step actually. Okay. So, after we are done with this, uh, then we predict it again one more time step, okay. so, both state as well as covariance matrix. So, this is because of this uh, easy of implementation is a logical flow of the expressions and all that, this, uh, this discrete form is kind of very popular actually. The predictor corrector form is, is a natural way of implementation actually. That way. Now, we will move further and then tell okay, the, uh, we, we seen continuous time Kalman filter, we have seen discrete time Kalman filter. Neither of that is actually a very good reality, because uh, what happens is uh, in pure continuous time Kalman filter, the assumption is uh, the sensor noise, I mean sensor measurement is, is available in a continuous time manner, which is unrealistic. And in a pure discrete form, uh, the system dynamics needs to be written in a discrete form, which is approximation to reality. Okay, so, I do not know, I mean uh, given a choice we will like to work with a continuous time state equation, but discrete time measurement equation and that is where it will lead to continuous discrete Kalman filter. So, let us see that in brief. So, what you are talking here is the state equation is, uh, is given in the in, in terms of continuous time, still it is linear, but uh, now let us talk about the uh, time varying system dynamics and all. Okay, and the measurement equation is given in terms of uh, discrete time. You see, W t is is a continuous process noise, and V k is a discrete sensor noise actually. So they also satisfy the similar properties. And then uh, remember, one will satisfy, satisfy in the in the chronical delta sense, and the other one is direct delta sense like that. This is direct delta. This is kind of chronical delta basically. So that means as long as uh, t is not equal to tau, this is this is zero. If t equal to tau, this is one. And similarly, if k is not equal to j, then it is uh, zero, and if k equal to j, this is one. And that's that way. So this is done because it's a discrete. I mean, it's a continuous time uh, formulation, and this is done because it's a discrete time formulation. Okay. So probably this. Uh, okay, there is a small mistake out there. So k is not required. For it. Okay. And this is what I was talking earlier. This is the discrete. Uh, I mean, this prediction correction me me mechanism is what is popular here. And so, assuming some value set t zero, I'll be able to predict it in a fairly continuous time manner. Okay, using any numerical scheme, not necessarily zero order hold and things like that. You can you can just uh, use any continuous time 
propagation uh, explorations and all to predict this. So, once I predict it, then the sensor information is available, I will I'll be able to correct it. I will, I mean, because the sensor will give you, assuming that uh, that is uh, that will give me correct information and all that, I will be able to make take advantage of that and then tell, okay, I am already here, but let me not operate further on that, uh, let me correct myself a little there and then operate further. So, this is prediction, this is correction, again prediction because in between I do not have any sensor information, I have to simply rely on what I have. So, starting with this initial condition, I will be able to predict, but at, the, at T2 I have got sensor information again. So, let me correct again from here. So, like that it will proceed actually. Okay. So, prob I mean in principle it is, uh, is similar to what you have seen before. With so, what it tells is propagate the state estimate model forward from T k to T k plus 1 using the initial condition and correct uh, the information uh, at whenever the measurement is available that is what I told you before. Okay, so, what it turns out is that uh, unlike this continuous time Kalman filter uh, expressions and all, because uh, the measurement is not available in between, in between uh, measurement is simply not there. It turns out that the covariance matrix, which is actually a continuous time expression this time, uh, is, uh, sim is given in a simplified form. That that nonlinear term, what you heard earlier, is is not there basically. Okay, so this uh, can be derived very rather easily actually. If you see this expression for p dot, this uh, x dot is given like that, x hat is given like that. The x i dot is the prediction part and remember that uh, there is no noise in that actually. Okay. So, now if I see that the, the error definition and error dynamics and things like that x tilde is x minus x z. So, x tilde dot is x dot minus x z dot. So, if I just take difference between the two b u b u goes and I left I am left out with a times x minus x z which is x, x tilde plus g w actually. So, I will be able to operate based on this uh, x tilde dot is x tilde plus g w. So, remember this is a time varying system dynamics and time varying system dynamics with W being the input matrix and things like that, I will be able to write the solution of that in a continuous time manner, where this phi t t 0 happens to be like a state transition matrix and things like that. And then R w x tilde, if we now is x tilde is available. So, covariance matrix for R w tilde will be given something like this, carry out the expressions and simplify, may simplify that in between and things like that, we will left, uh, we will be left out with this this expression really. Now, what do you do with now p dot is, uh, is by definition like this, okay, these two terms. So, you have one term and the same term transpose and one term we have uh, we need to derive. So, this one term is, is it can be derived simply by definition because x tilde dot we just derived here. So, we put it there and x tilde is we keep it then we proceed further like that way. And then e times expected value of x, uh, see e time expected value of x tilde times x tilde transpose, this by definition is p matrix anyway. So, we will put p matrix here, then this one we just derived it uh, the half times q z transpose and then g is already there here. So, this is half times q z transpose, so that will happen to be like that. So, p dot is uh, this expression plus the same expression transpose. So, this expression what you have here plus the same expression transpose. Now, you simplify these two terms and half half will be combined together things like that. So, p dot happens to be like that basically that is what I told here p dot happens to be like that. So, what is the summary part of it again here? Uh, the model is uh, given like this okay, the continuous time model the measurement is like this discrete time. We initialize the state vector as well as the covariance matrix. We compute the gain which is actually a discrete time minor k e k is like this. And then once you uh, once you compute the gain, you will be able to correct the state vector, starting from the predicted value. We can get an updated value using this innovation term. Then we need to get ready with the next time step. Uh, next time step, uh, we can propagate that way. The the state equation can be propagated using this uh, this part of the system dynamics, not uh, including noise. And uh, this uh, covariance matrix can also be propagated that way actually. Okay, again, this uh, the symmetric form is preferable. So, propagation sense so we will uh, make use of this propagation as I told and we will also make use of this propagation term and I mean this uh, continuous time covariance matrix to propagate actually. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, uh, what I mean is this, this covariance matrix can, can also be updated there. Okay. 
let me if you go back that you are not only updating this state equation state information here with the measurement we will uh, we'll also update the covariance matrix here then we will propagate the covariance matrix using the continuous time expression that is available ok. So, this is update stage ok both the both the state vector as well as covariance matrix will be updated then they will be propagated by one more time step actually. Remember the way it is mechanized it does not really require uniform delta t that means uh, it, the propagation time step and updated time step need not be same actually ok. You keep on propagating uh, as long as the sensor information is not available the moment sensor information is available you update the information that you have actually. So, that is a very neat way of mechanization actually. Also, uh, I mean this is what I already told and then uh, this is what it told is like uh, p dot expression is a continuous time Lyapunov equation if you see this is no more a Ricard equation basically it is uh, in a discrete uh, I mean continuous discrete framework it turns out to be nothing but a Lyapunov equation sort of thing ok. Now, finally, with this uh, information we will be able to touch upon this uh, this external command filter which is very popular in, in industry and most of the time people use that uh, that external command filter. So, first to remember first is uh, nonlinear estimation problems are, are considerably more difficult uh, than the linear problems in general and EKF turns out to be an idea, but uh, not a cure for everything that means that you just cannot tell that okay, because I know EKF uh, I will be able to solve everything. It, but surprisingly it turns out that EKF actually works for a variety of problems actually a large number of problems EKF does work, but to some cases it may not work also ok because EKF is not a very rigid precise theory it is an extension idea really. So, uh, what the problem? Problem is like if the nonlinear system even if you take uh, Gaussian input uh, it really does not translate uh, it does not retain Gaussian nature actually ok. If it is a linear system the nature of that uh, the, the Gaussian nature remains intact, but in all linear case does not actually ok. Okay. What is the assumption fundamental assumption? Uh, what you are assuming in, it, in external kernel filter is that the true state is sufficiently close to the estimated state actually already ok. And in implementation it may not be actually initially we will not be able to guess a very close uh, state information and all that and that is one of the more one of the difficulties of course, because universal stability like linear system theory is not available. Guess will play a role and if your guess is too far away you will have a problem actually, but it turns out that you can have a fairly large amount of uh, error in the initial guess it will go through a large amount of transient, but it ultimately settles out nicely actually. Anyway, coming back, uh, what it assumes that true state is sufficiently close to the estimated state, and hence uh, we can actually linearize the nonlinear system about the estimated state, and then use the uh, linear theory that we have just uh, discussed before. Actually, that's what the idea. So let's talk about uh, the most popular form, continuous discrete EKF, and that's the most natural form also. The system dynamics is continuous, but measurement is discrete again. So what do you do here? Okay. So, similar idea like we will be able to like with without the availability of measurement we will be able to propagate the state information as well as the covariance information for to the next time step and as long as the system dynamics is available we will be able to correct it actually ok. Uh, sorry as long as the measurement information is available we can update this uh, this uh, predicted values to corrected values really. So, that is that is the way it will, it will proceed actually. Now, so what is the summary of this? Uh, the entire derivation will not go through probably, but the summary part is, is something like this. We have a system dynamics like this where f of x u t u is the this is the nonlinear system dynamics we know that ok, but we still assume that the noise part is additive and noise part appears linearly based rather ok. And uh, this output is, uh, is again a nonlinear expression plus v k ok. Remember the system dynamics is continuous, but uh, like uh, measurement is actually uh, discrete. So probably you can put a k. All right. So again, the uh, with to mechanize this, uh, we need some initial condition, and then in that initial condition uh, we have to guess. And so x at k, uh, sorry, x at uh, minus t zero is x zero. That's a guess and p 0 minus expected value of that and that also a value of this matrix needs to be guessed. Most of the time these values are guessed as diagonal matrices anyway. Okay. 
And so, this is uh, this is what is required. Then we will have a gain computation okay, like uh, fairly similar to what we discussed in the uh, continuous discrete form of regular Kalman filter for linear systems. We will do that. But remember these are matrices now. So, matrices are actually this C k minus what you are using here needs to be okay, uh, estimated this way actually. That means, uh, you take uh, linearization of this output equation. So, C k minus is linearized form of this, uh, this equation actually. Okay. So, that is what will go here. And similarly, you will need uh, I mean once you com compute this Kalman gain, you will be able to use that for the update equations and these expressions and all we have derived before. So, that is exactly same thing that you will be using. And then the after we are done with this, we need to have a propagation thing and propagation happens to be like that. So, we have a state equation which can be propagated without noise part of course and then it is a covariance matrix uh, I mean differential equation which will need to integrate actually. So, the using that we will be able to propagate and here this A matrix is again a Jacobian matrix which is derived del f by del x and which is evaluated about the current estimate x at t. Okay. So, A t and C t will be required here C k minus and all that and these are actually a nothing but the linearization of the system dynamics and output equation what you have about the current estimate what you have actually. Okay. So, once you are ready with these matrices you can treat that as at that point of time that is my time varying system dynamics matrix that I have and for that I already know how to deal with actually because continuous discrete Kalman filter for linear systems is available to me. So, this is how, how you operate actually. So, every point of time you generate a, a, a and C matrices about a something like a time varying linear matrix sort of thing and then using your uh, like uh, regular linear system Kalman theory, Kalman filter theory you will be able to uh, compute the necessary matrices and all. So, okay, so again this operates based on this prediction correction, prediction correction like that actually. So, there is also an idea of this uh, something called iterated EKF, that is the fundamental EKF anyway, but you will see that there are uh, plenty of ideas of various extensions and then various arts and all like how do you implement, what you do depends on your system dynamics, depends on your experience, depends on your insight to the problem, many, many, many things will happen around that actually. So, one of that happens to be this iterated EKF where they tell okay, I, once I update these equations okay, over here. Let me again uh, go back and tell okay, can I can I update one more time? Okay, can I update one more time like that actually? Because the system matrix is this you are talking about some sort of a linearization here, and linearization is about my predicted value. So let me do the linearization again the uh, I mean with respect to the corrected value also and operate the filtering equation one more time actually. So that one you can keep on doing that because you keep on updating your so your state and covariance matrix anyway. So, so I will just update it and go back and tell okay, I will reevaluate this this CK, CK minus matrix about this x at k plus now and then I will use that one actually now. Okay. So, you keep on updating several times before you proceed to I mean stop somewhere uh, preferably after some convergence happens and then you start your propagation uh, equations actually, you start using your propagation equation. This is the whole idea of iterated EK. And one can proceed with a fixed number of iterations, uh, does not have to really um, wait for convergence and all. You can simply use some 2, 3 iterations and all that before you proceed further. This is see, remember these are all like, uh, like real time computation issues uh, should be addressed also because uh, without that this, this has no meaning either also basically. So, we can uh, use it based on fixed number of iterations then go to the next step, go to the next step like that actually. All right. So, there are various recommendations and issues in EKF. So, before talking uh, I mean uh, before stopping this lecture and winding up this course let me talk several small small recommendations that are given for successful implementation of EKF and again I will talk in a very generic sense basically. So, first thing is uh, the design choice and all that. So, design parameters a lot of times you will see in the literature that these are the recommendations that uh, that, that will pop up. So, remember the, the, the tuning sense what you really need is an initial condition guess for the state vector and other than that we need values for uh, these matrices R, P naught and Q. Okay. Right, P, Q and uh, I mean the, what they call P naught, Q and R sort of thing, but uh, you can think of that way. So, what they tell is uh, like first thing is you fix your R matrix because R is nothing but sensor covariance matrix. So, depending on what type of sensors that you have uh, that will uh, that will be fixed from there 
because you study the nature of your sensors and then uh, find out the covariance matrix for that and th that is the reality. So, do not uh, try to put out that actually. So, keep, keep your uh, arm matrix fixed based on the sensors that you are using. Okay. Then uh, you select a P naught which is sufficiently high that is a uh, lot of times you will see that P naught value is recommended to be very high and that actually helps in, in some sort of a stability behavior actually. That means, even though your initial condition guess is large enough, then only so if, you, if your P naught selection is high it turns out that the filter does converge after some initial transient of course. Now, once you fix R to, uh, from the sensors and fix P naught sufficiently high, the only flexibility that you are left out with Q basically. So, you have to tune Q already, I mean until you obtain satisfactory result basically. So, that is the standard recommendation that uh, that is there in, in many literature actually. Second issue, if you see that as I told uh, this uh, EKF and all it will it will uh, it will go through initial uh, large transients actually. So, initially it will go through large transients and then ultimately it will try to settle and after that the error will be small actually. So, obviously, you do not want to use these transient values which are erroneous anyway. Okay. So, what you what you have to do is probably you should, uh, you should run the filter sufficiently ahead of time prior to its usage. So, that the, the error stabilizes before its actual usage actually. Okay. So, if you especially when you want to close in that means you want to operate the estimated state into the control design and things like that. So, recommendation is, is uh, you use the filter for a I mean you start operating your filter in the background for some time and then after some time only you close the loop uh, for the controller actually. So, that means by that time the error is stabilized, error is small and then it will operate as if it is like a two estimated state and all that is two, two state and all. Okay. So, invariably you will see that there is some sort of a uh, initial time lag given to the filter to stabilize before its actual size actually. There is another recommendation I have seen many times that we lot of people are in favor of the idea that measurement equation is to be linear as much as possible. Okay. For example, I mean the theory tells that okay, I can linearize the, the measurement uh, equation as well and, and obtain a C matrix, but in general what lot of uh, practicing engineers who, have, who actually work in EKF have observed that if you, if you keep the measurement equation linear wherever possible, then it leads to better stability properties of the filter. That is just uh, some sort of an experience uh, recommendation sort of thing, there is no, no theory uh, reasoning to back it up actually. Okay. So, one example is for example, if you are talking about something like a missile guidance problem and your uh, seeker or radar uh, gets the information in polar coordinate, then the system dynamics associated with that is, uh, you should also use in polar coordinate estimate the states in polar coordinate and then transform it to, to Cartesian coordinate if you need actually. But if you start with the Cartesian coordinate itself and use polar coordinate information uh, as out sensor output, then the, the measurement equation becomes nonlinear. Once you start linearizing it, you are truncating the information. So, these are some of the issues that you want to avoid actually. Okay. So, that is another recommendation. And appropriate care should be taken to avoid numerical ill conditioning actually that uh, you can see some of this recommendation in this Rashidis Jenkins book, this all of my discussion is from this book. And you can see that okay, one of the recommendation as I told is uh, let us you, you, you need to use this expression for uh, for this pk plus instead of that simplified expression. If you use this, this will have better uh, numerical properties even though both these uh, expressions are identical mathematically. Okay. So, that is another care that you need to take actually. Okay, one more big uh, recommendation is uh, we need to eliminate outliers actually. So, sometimes this, uh, this sensor informations are not really good and we and this EKF actually gives us a platform because we have a predictor state, we have a measurement equation actually which is like uh, y and y hat sort of thing and if the innovation term is really very big then I do not want to account for that. Okay. If it is uh, reasonably small and all, I will assume the sensor is correct, I will update. If it is too high, too big, then probably momentarily I need to ignore that. I will consider that some sort of a outlier and just ignore that actually. Also remember that EKF in general is fragile, that, that means the only a narrow band of design variables uh, will be very good for, for successful operation. So, do not lose your patience what I mean. So, keep on tuning this and ultimately you will see that EKF actually works wonderfully for a, for a number of problem, but uh, you need to have patience be, for making it operation, uh, operational actually. And there are ultimately there are consistency checks of the Kalman filters, there are various checks actually, one is sigma bound test, normalized error square test, normalized mean square test, auto, auto correlation test, 
as a like whiteness test and all that. There are Cramer Ram inequality tests and all that. So, there are various tests available and uh, at least a few of them needs to be done to have confidence in your estimation and all that actually. That is certainly recommended and you need to do that actually. Okay. There are limitations, so linearization is not good, general convergence, guarant convergence guarantee is not there and blah, 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 many issues because of that there are other ideas available beyond EKF actually and I will not uh, discuss too many on that. If you are interested, you can see UKF, you can see particle filtering, you can see H infinity filtering, lot, or lot, lot, lot things actually. So, with that uh, probably I will stop here, but then the reference books are available. The first book is my most favorite book and that is what I have taken from. My second one is also good and you can see some other books uh, uh, available. They are very good application book, there are theory books like that actually. So, with that I will stop here. Thanks a lot.